are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or those of you joining us live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. It's our pleasure to provide this very special online worship experience today. Please share your comments throughout the service and please share the link with others after the service for their benefit as well. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning and thank you for making time to join us this morning for the CBS Family Service. I'll be your moderator for today. My name is Grace Mutiso and I'm joined this morning by an amazing worship team from Sitam Kikuyu. Won't you take some moment to invite this team and join us in praising and worshiping our God. <music>
every one of you watching us on Hope TV, listening to us on Hope FM, and of course following us online for still sticking here as we worship the Lord together. I know that you have been blessed by the ministry of our amazing worship team serving with us this morning. I invite you to stay tuned because there is more worship coming up after this sermon, and I believe it's going to be awesome. We are focusing today on the issue around false teachings and cult currently affecting our nation, Kenya. Once again, my name is Grace Mutiso, serving as your moderator. Well, it's now time to hear the word of God, and our speaker for today is the presiding bishop of Christ is the Answer Ministries, Reverend Callisto Odede. His title for today's sermon is The World of the Cult. And as you watch and listen, feel free to comment and share and ask any question that you may have. Our hashtag for today is Do Not Be Deceived. Now, it's my joy and pleasure to invite Bishop Odede to bring us today's message. Good morning. Uh, it's a, a great joy for us again to assemble before the holy presence of the Father as we reflect uh, on his word. As a nation, uh, we are finding ourselves in that difficult situation where we are mourning the departure of uh, over 90 people who have uh, died as a result of uh, allegedly influenced by a religious leader. And this makes us want to look at uh, uh, the impact and uh, uh, what religion really means when it begins to mislead people into this kind of events. Uh, our condolences to the families of all those uh, who have been bereaved, and we pray that God would bring comfort uh, to your hearts. Uh, about three or so weeks ago, I did make mention of some uh, of these issues in uh, our broadcast here at Hope TV and Hope uh, FM. Uh, but perhaps uh, I think it is a time for us uh, to go a little bit into details uh, concerning some of these issues which have arisen and which are, are occupying us uh, as a nation uh, right now. And so today I look at uh, uh, the world of the cults, the world of the cults. Uh, and uh, shopping in one of these uh, modern day mega malls, uh, one is... Uh, left with a confusing experience, particularly if you went to shop for something simple as a, a toothpaste, Colgate, you will find that uh, uh, there are seven different brands and varieties uh, of uh, toothpaste uh, that you are actually looking at rather than just toothpaste. The Christian scene is like one big shopping mall where people are window shopping for the truth. Orthodox evangelical Christianity is not the only player in the field. There are other competitors uh, who not only claim to be the custodians of God's revelation, but also insist as uh, having a monopoly of the truth. This is greatly compounded by the fact that uh, in our postmodern world, people try all that they can to uh, be politically correct. And if you're not you viewed as uh, intolerant, uh, and so the key word is uh, tolerance. As such, there is no absolute or universal truth. Each person has their own version of truth, uh, which is just as acceptable as the others. Uh, and believers, therefore, are finding themselves in this space where we are urged to come up with a measure of truth based on Scripture when it is properly interpreted. And so we need to learn and glean some insights from the Word of God, both in the field of believing, but also in the field of practice, so that we are able to live our lives in such a manner that it would be in accordance with the Word of the Lord. Otherwise, we may subject ourselves to deception and to delusion to the extent we may end up in a state where we actually lose control of ourselves. The Apostle Paul wrote to uh, young Timothy in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 23 through 26. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23 through 26. And this is what the Bible says. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth. 
and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. In this passage of scripture, Paul points to us a number of things that are pertinent very, very quickly, then we'll get into the gist of the message. He points to us that a servant of the Lord needs to avoid foolish and stupid arguments. In other words, a servant of the Lord needs to be wise rather than foolish and stupid. And sometimes some decisions that we make, sometimes some arguments that we engage in, sometimes some events and individuals that we follow, the attitude that we reflect is not the attitude of a servant of God. The attitude that we reflect is an attitude of foolishness and stupidity. It is an attitude that does not engage our mind, that does not engage reason. It appears like we have kissed goodbye to all our mental faculties and we are basically operating on hormones or even more so feelings alone rather than reasoning. And so Paul tells Timothy, if you want to engage in any argument, let it not be foolish and stupid. Engage in reasonable arguments. And sometimes the reason why people tend to get into these errors is because we become foolish and stupid and we do not give attention to our minds. Paul says, avoid quarrels because quarrels will engender disagreements that are not necessary. Paul says, correct sensitively those who are in the opposition. In other words, use kind and teaching words and gently instruct them so that they would be able to glean insight into what is the truth as you correct them. Don't let them go on their way, but correct them. But as you do so, do so kindly, gently, and through instructions that would help them. Paul also points out that if we do so, God would grant those that we are trying to correct, number one, that they would actually come into repentance because they are not repenting because of lack of truth. And when we share with them, we are able to usher them and then they begin saying, aha, now I can see where I was in error and they are led into truth. But Paul also points out that they will come to their senses. Now, this is an extremely important phrase that Paul is using here. It simply means that some people who have swayed away from the truth have lost their senses, their faculties. How have they lost that? Through intimidation, through mind control, through manipulation. Someone else has taken control of their senses. They are not reasoning properly because their senses have been taken control over. How else can we explain some of the calamities that have befallen us as a nation? How else can we explain a parent watching their baby die of hunger when they can actually do something about it? How else can we explain an individual refusing to eat to the extent they are getting into a, 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 a situation where they are dying because a religious leader has told them to do so? They have come to the point of losing their senses. Paul points out to us but he also points out to us another element. He says that actually some of these individuals have been ensnared and held captive by the devil. In other words, that as a person gives themselves to some of these kinds of teachings, teachings that have their origin in the very pit of hell, what the Bible refer, refers to as the doctrines of demons, it reaches a point where these individuals are captivated and held captives by the devil so that they are not delivered, they are not free. And if we teach them and share with them and bring the light of the truth to them, these individuals will come to a point where actually they will be delivered from the captivity and the bondage of Satan that they are experiencing. It is therefore because of this reason that we feel it is important just to take time out to examine some things that we think will be able to help us come out of situations and perhaps help someone else. We will take time to examine the world 
of cults, their beliefs, their modes of operation, and finally responding to their teachings. Our intention is to be able to reach out to those who are in these cultic moves. And this is not only the Kilifi incident here in Kenya, but also other movements that are going on right across the world. Some that may not have turned out in such a, a, a traumatic events like the Kilifi incident, but nevertheless are also cultic groups that are dissuading, uh, dissuading people from holding on to the truth of the word of the Lord. Groups that are dehumanizing others. Groups that are holding people captive that we may be able to share with them. While we should respect them and express the love of God to them in our words, in our tone, in our spirit, without necessarily ridiculing and making fun of them, yet at the same time, we need not hold back. We need to come out honestly and point out the areas of error, the areas of deception that they may be pointing out uh, to many people. Professor James Sire wrote and said, but we ought to remember that it is not those outside the influence of the cards that we wish to amuse, but those inside we wish to attract and to convince to the truth. So our intention is not to amuse ourselves and pat ourselves in the back and say, oh no, I'm not in cult. Oh no, I'm in the truth. Our intention is not even to make people laugh at the cultic groups. Our intention is that God may use the words that we share to perhaps bring someone to the light of the truth. Recognizing there are many people who are bound and need to see the light. What then, as we begin looking at understanding the world of the cults, what then is a cult? Now, the original meaning of the word cult is actually taken from a Latin word which uh, uh, simply mean, means to worship or give reverence to a deity. The word cultus has been used generally to refer to worship regardless of the particular God that one is worshiping. And so when we look at the Latin Vulgate Bible, the Vulgate as it is called, in Acts chapter 17, in verse 23, when referring to worship of false gods, it uses the word cultus, where we get cult from. And in verse 25, when referring to the worship of the true God, it also uses the word cultus. So, this word does seem to have a generic meaning. However, we want to move it from the generic meaning into a very specific meaning where we are using it to refer to certain kinds of things. So what definition would we run with today? A cult is any religious movement that is organizationally distinct. It is separate. It is distinct. And it claims to be Christian and as doctrines and or practices that deviate from those of the scripture as interpreted by orthodox Christianity. So here we are, a distinct group, separate, autonomous, but it calls itself Christian. And then when you examine its doctrines, you will discover that the doctrines and the practices, in other words, their beliefs and their practices are such that it does not match what we have all along understood the Bible to be saying as properly interpreted by Christianity that is basic Christianity that is orthodox. In other words, both in orthodoxy, right kind of beliefs, and in orthopraxy, right kind of practice, they actually deviate from the truth that we do know. Walter Martin makes reference and says, this is any major deviation from Orthodox Christianity relative to the cardinal doctrines of the Christian faith. Charles Braden says, a cult is any religious group which differs significantly in some or one or more respects as to believe or practice from those religious groups which are regarded as the normative expression of religion in our total culture. So there is something about beliefs and there is something about departure from the normative, departure from what we always have viewed as the right kind of believer. Ronald Enroth says, 
cults are defined as religious organizations that tend to be outside the mainstream of the dominant religious forms of any given society. There are people who have objected to this definition or even the usage of the word cult because they say the media has hyped up the word cult to the extent that even very genuine evangelical Christian groups are sometimes referred to as cults. So they have said, let's not use the word cult at all. This category prefers the word new religious movements. But the fact that a religious movement is mean, new does not necessarily mean that it is a cult. Others have objected to this saying, cults are not, as a matter of fact, one scholar from Kenya wrote a little while back and said, cults are not Kenyan problems, cults are foreign problems. Now, we cannot actually uh, uh, say that now when we are faced with all these kind of activities that we are seeing in the country right now. Others have said, taking an anti-cultist uh, uh, stance is not good for Christians because some of these people that we refer to as cultic groups are part and parcel of the wider umbrella organizations that brings Kenyans together. Now, another person has said that uh, cults are on the global rise and are, 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 are only outside, but what about in Kenya here? Dini Yam Samwa of Jehovah Wanyonyi, or more recently, the Jesus of Tongarin, among many others uh, who all claim to be uh, 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 one way or another. Someone has said cults are not as dangerous as we claim they are. Therefore, we need to let them be integrated into society. We cannot say that after reading about Jim Jones of Guyana, where 900 people actually lost their life as a result of taking Holy Communion laced with cyanide. We cannot say so when we think of uh, David, uh, David Corrosion and the David cult in USA, where they took arms and began fighting with the government. We cannot say so when we think of the movement of restoration of the Ten Commandments in Kanungu in Uganda where 700 people locked themselves up in a room in a church and then set themselves on fire. We cannot say so. Cows can sometimes be extremely dangerous because of the way they influence people, the way they make people act. So we cannot actually say let's leave them alone, let's integrate them in the society because they are not as dangerous they are dangerous both to the well-being of people and to the beliefs, especially when we think that they would have eternal consequences on where a person would actually spend their eternity. And so when we differ in non-cardinal doctrines because of one denomination different from another denomination, we would not call one other a cult. As a matter of fact, then we would dialogue over our differences. And those of us would perhaps know those from the charismatic Pentecostal circles believe if you are to be baptized, you are to be baptized in lots of water. Those from the Anglican and other circles believe you can even be sprinkled with water. Now, those are areas where we dialogue with one another. We do not call one another a cult because of those. But when we differ in cardinal points and fundamental issues of the Christian faith and also in life-threatening and abuse using practices, we certainly and lovingly need to go on the war path to discipline, to warn, to correct, and to show that we are intolerant of such teachings that are actually taking people away from the fundamental beliefs of Scripture. The other related terminology is false religion is basically a system of belief that opposes the central teachings of the Christian faith, whether it claims to be Christian or not Christian. Thus, a cult can also be part of false religion. The occult, sometimes used, the occult refers to secret mysterious practices that evokes a doubling with the supernatural, including spiritism, fortune-telling, magic, astrology, witchcraft, devil worship, consulting the dead, direct dealings with demons, and other related practices. Anyone who is involved with this, including invoking your avatars, spirit guides within you to lead you, all those are touching in the area of the occult. 
Heresy was a terminology that was used in the early church in order to refer to those who had deviated from or denied some fundamental Christian doctrines in the early uh, uh, church, uh, during the early church father's era, referring to them as heresies. Other terms that are used, new religion, alternative religion, fringe uh, religions, aberrational religions, all these making reference to cults. Now, when we turn to the word of God, the Bible, right from the book of Genesis, we always will see that at any particular point, there were groups, there were societies, there were communities, there were intents or there were movements or ideologies that tended to compete with the right way of the Lord. Right from the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1 and 5, we find Satan speaking out, Indeed, has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? For God knows that in the day you eat in your uh, uh, you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will, like, uh, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. In other words, Satan attempting to derail, uh, attempting to, to derail Eve in order to offer an alternative religion. We read in Genesis 11, verse 4, And they said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven and let us make for ourselves a name lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Archaeologists have proven that actually what was being referred to is the ziggurats, and the ziggurats were temples that were being built up to raise them up to such a level so that they would be used in order to offer alternative religion in the times of uh, 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 the Old Testament period. And then we find Moses speaking with the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse 1 through 3. And Moses said, if a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder comes true concerning which he spoke to you, let us go after other gods whom you have not known and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer or dreams for the Lord your God is testing you. In other words, even if... One comes out saying, let us follow the Lord. And whatever he's saying becomes true. But he's saying, let us follow another God rather than the living God. We will know they are false prophets. The New Testament also offers us many verses and passages that have to deal with the false worship, including the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Matthew chapter 24 Verse 24, Jesus warned and said, For false Christ and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Paul talking with the elders of Ephesus in Acts chapter 20, verse 29 and 30 says, I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, men will arise, speaking perverse things to draw uh, away the disciples after them. John, in the epistle of John, spoke about this. Second Peter, Jude spoke about this. Paul, in a number of his writings, spoke about the Gnosticism, Ceremonialism, Galatianism, Antimonianism. All of these were groups that were trying to lead away Christians from the fundamental truth of the word of the living God. So ladies and gentlemen, cars are not new. Cars have been there in the Old Testament era. They have been there in the New Testament era. In the early church fathers, we have a number of them. We think of the Masonites. We think of Montanism. We think of Docetism. We think of Sabellianism. We think of Arianism. Some who stress the humanity of Christ. Some who denied the uh, pre-existence of Christ. Some who denied the divinity of Christ. All these were there even in the early church period when uh, the early church fathers were in existence. So cults have been there and throughout the history of the church they have been there and even in our 
day they are there. That is why it is so important that we be equipped to be able to understand their world so that we can be able to mark them out. We do not become culprits in being persuaded to follow after them. Allow me to mention some characteristics of cults that I think are pertinent and that would help us as we look out to identify them. First of all, some sociology, uh, sociological characteristics and tendencies. Number one, cults tend to have all-powerful leader whom they believe to be a Messiah-like figure. The leader or group is the absolute and final authority. The leader determines rules for daily living and determines the dogma and the doctrines that they preach. Secondly, rational thought is discouraged, forbidden, or even under suspicion. The leader redefines terms. The member is not to question his new knowledge and doubt is often, often equated with guilt. Thirdly, the cult often uses deceptive recruit techniques. The potential or new recruiter is not told as fast what they are getting in. What they are presented to is a glossy kind of picture of world transformation or a new world, but they are not told the real truth of what actually they are getting into. Most cult members would probably not join if they knew ahead of time all that it would entail. The cult leaves the follower forth with the impression that their problems can only be solved within this group. All help from a previous support system is actually discouraged and forbidden. Sometimes even links with parents and uh, uh, is cut off. The cult manipulates guilt. Members are often forced to confess their inadequacies and these are used to manipulate them so that they remain within the circles. Cult members may be isolated from the outside world and from their family. They cannot use their phone. They cannot access the internet. They cannot relate with their family. They abandon their family. They cut off all contacts. They may be cut off from any past acquaintances as well and from any input from the media. They may be told that the outside world is evil and doomed. Salvation comes only by remaining within the group and giving up everything. Seventh, the cult may make basic career and life decisions for the followers, including issues like sex, diet, use of medicine, and even whether or not to have children. Career sometimes is abandoned. Schools are abandoned because the cult now becomes the member's lives and defines the direction for the member. Cults use idealism sometimes to attract members. However, uh, efforts are soon channeled into making the member become so ingrained that sometimes it is only the leader who benefits, uh, although the member is encouraged to work sometimes. Cars can be anti-woman. They force women to dress funnily or strangely. They are anti-family. They oppress women. They regulate birth control, sometimes even childbirth. There are some cars that even encourage abortion. Cows members believe that the world is coming to an end because they've been presented by a doomsday kind of program where they need to do all that they can. They often adopt a new name, new vocabularies, new clothing, new manner of dressing because the world is coming to an end. And as such, some cults members espouse death and become very, very emboldened to death because they know this is the closer way of getting to God. Cults are often having an air of mystery where members are even encouraged to uh, 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 lie to outsiders while insiders they know the truth. And cults can sometimes turn violent, absolutely violent, especially when they feel threatened. These are some sociological tendency and characteristics. When you see some of these things in any group, please flee for your life. Run, flee for your life. 
There are some theological tendencies as well, errors in theology. How do they treat their leader? Do they give him a kind of an elevated personality where he acts almost like deputy God? Where their leader is revered and honored? Do they stress on extra biblical sources? They use the Bible, but they propagate a new revelation. They use the Bible, but they also have the teachings of their leaders, the prophecies of their leaders, the dreams of their leaders, the vision of their leader as what is being taken. They use the Bible, but they have a kind of a visionary interpretation of the Bible. What other source do they use? Another book. A book that is not the Bible at all. They are involved in scripture twisting. They pick up a scripture and they twist it so that it says completely a different thing. They claim monopoly to knowledge. It is only in them where there is truth. Sometimes they use relics, emblems, and symbols. They have a lot of evangelistic zeal in trying to influence others who are outside. And more often than not, they fish from the pond rather than fishing from the lake. They go mainly to those who are already Christians. If you come across a group like this, we're taking this series to help you to be able to discern them, get into that world of the cult, be able to identify them. Please run away with your life. Flee from your life. And if you are there already and you are involved, you can do what Paul talked about. Paul said you can repent. Paul said you can come to a knowledge of the truth. Paul said you can be delivered from the power of darkness and you can begin afresh by walking in the direction of the Lord. And I would want to urge you, if you do know a relative, a friend, a brother who also may be in something like this, share with them this. Draw them, share with them this. We will be continuing with this series Ask them, urge them to listen also to this series so that their lives may be saved in the process. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the opportunity you have given us to share your word. We give you praise, glory, and honor for these insights that you have given to us. And we pray for those, oh God, who may be out there who perhaps have become victims of cultic groups. We pray that in your divine wisdom, you'd reach out to them, Lord, and you'd reclaim them to yourself. Those whose eyes have been blinded, those who have paid attention to foolishness and stupidity, as your word says, those, oh God Almighty, who have, whose senses have been completely taken away and they are not able to come to their right senses. We pray that you reach out and you deliver them. Those who are in bondage to demons and spirits, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, set them free from the afflictions of the evil one. And for those of us, Lord, whom you are sharing with this, we pray that you'd help us to share with others, that others may be delivered from the influence of the devil. We ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Get in touch with us. The Lord bless you. What a powerful and inspiring message from our presiding Bishop Odede. Please share your takeaway points on the chat section on Facebook and YouTube. For now, it's our time to pause and let's reflect in a time of prayer. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we are grateful for your word. Your word is true. Your word is life. And as your servant, Bishop Odede, has challenged us that we need to flee from cultic practices. We need to trust you and read your word and use your word, you know, to appropriate it in our lives. We ask in Jesus' name that you will help us. I pray for those of us who have loved ones who are in cult, that you'll give us the courage and the grace to minister to them so that you can bring them back you know, to the fold and the truth of the word of God. So we give you thanks and we give you praise. And I also want to pray for anyone who is watching and listening and they are trusting you, oh God, that you'll be able to help them in this journey of salvation. I ask in Jesus' name that through the help of the Holy Spirit, our helper, you minister to every one of our listener, of our viewer, your peace, your comfort and assurance, oh God, that with you, everything is okay.
So we give you thanks and praise and we still pray for the remaining parts of the broadcast that you'll continue to speak to us and would you use us as you desire and may you be glorified in everything that we do and everything that we say. For this we pray with thanksgiving and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen and amen. Amen. I'm glad that you're still here with us. At this point, allow me to invite back the worship team once again as we give God thanks and praise for ministering to us in today's service. Amen. I hope you're ready to dance with Jesus this morning. Hey.
now time to give. And I'd love us to make a quick prayer. And after that, we'll be airing a clip for you to watch and listen to get directions on how to give. We are grateful, our Father, for giving us so much. And as we come back to your presence to give you of what you've given us, we pray that you'll be able to bless it, O God. I also want to pray for those who do not have, we trust you as they work with their hands. You'll provide for them and they'll be able to give next time. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please watch and listen to these directions on how to give. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work here at SIDM. We believe that God, who sees in secret, will reward you openly and abundantly. We have a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you happen to attend and even for our visitors. You can give via mobile money through the platforms M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933934. For the account name, please indicate the SITM assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of any SITM assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other SITM payable numbers remain operational. If you would like to make direct bank deposits, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch and the account number is 011. 2806176390 the swift code k c double o k e n a if you prefer to give through our website kindly visit www.sitem.org click on the give tab and follow the instruction for online giving once again we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift every tithe every offering and every generous material support god bless you Each and every day, every one of us make choices, and some choices are extremely important. But the greatest choice that we ever make is the choice that pertains to life. And that's why at FDC this year, we are inviting you to be with us as we examine the topic uh, choices. Hello, Kenya. Hi, Kenya. Finally, we're coming to Kenya. Yeah. And we're coming to Christ is the Answer Ministries, Sita. <laughs> And we'll be there for the Family Discipleship Conference 2023, holding on the 3rd to the 6th of May. And the theme is The Choice. I'll be speaking about raising families in the 21st century. There's a lot of challenges in this century. The question is, what must remain constant in the midst of these challenges? I'll be speaking at the FDC Conference 2023 beginning from the 3rd of May all the way to 6th of May. Please come. You can register and be part of this great conference at fdc.citam.org and it is entirely free of charge. God bless you. We'll see you there. Thank you so much for joining us on today's CBS Family Service. Remember to join us on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Please take note of the new timing that is Tuesday at 6 p.m. for the After Sunday Live with today's speaker Bishop Odede as he'll be answering all your questions regarding today's subject. Now on Wednesday, the day after Tuesday, that is on Wednesday at 6 p.m., we'll be having the live prayer service where you can send in your prayer requests and our pastors will be bringing them before the Lord in a time of prayer. Please keep tweeting, keep engaging us and sharing today's link with a friend, with a neighbor, with anyone you know who will benefit from the service. And our hashtag is do not be deceived. And again, remember to use the annual Bible study guide this week for further study on our theme. If you've made a decision to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, please let us know. We'll be glad to reach out to you. Our WhatsApp number is 0728-221-221. Again, 0728- 221221. The numbers are right at the bottom of your screen. And for all of you listening to us, the number again, 0728 221221. We'll make sure we follow up with you during this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Grace Mutiso. I've been your moderator for today. And allow us to end today's service by just making a benediction. And let's say it together. 
May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much. Shalom and God bless. See you next time.